Welcome to the Love Deep Lab podcast, helping you integrate sex, sexiness, sacredness, and science in your life and your bedroom. And now, your host, Dr. Stormy. Hi, I'm your host, Dr. Stormy. Welcome back to the Love Deep Lab podcast, season two. Yay! I am so excited to be in season two with you. We had 40 seasons in season one on amazing topics of all things sex, science, and sacredness. These are three pillars that are so important to us here at Love Deep Lab and so important to me in my own personal growth and in my work with clients and in our small groups and different programming that we make because for so many reasons, first of all, sex is, tends to be really shrouded and like, let's not talk about it, but everybody wants to have great sex and we are all sexual beings whether we want to talk about it or not. So there's so much shame, judgment, uh, social messaging and programming that goes into sex. And so one of our missions here, particularly on the podcast, is to shed light, love, science, skills, consciousness to the amazing subject of sex and sexuality. Science is the second pillar and science because let's be sound about it. Let's look at what the research says. Let's look at neurochemistry and physiology so that we can best have the most amazing passion in our life, in our love, and in our sex. Um, And the science is really important to me. Uh, And sacredness. This is the part that is magical, mystical, and really can't be explained by science. And it's the like adoration, devotion to yourself, to your body, to sex, to a beloved, to a partner or partners. And this piece is really beautiful. Um, I worked with a meditation teacher years ago who said, wherever we put our attention is sacred. So how do you want to focus and direct your attention into the realm of growing your passion in your life, growing your um, sex skills and your sexuality and your connection to your own body and your own sexual power? So that is the kind of the overarching summary of what we do here at the Love Deep Lab podcast. Uh, new episodes every Thursday. Again, season two. This is the first episode of season two. Um, and every other week or so, we have uh, really amazing guests. We have some fabulous guests lined up for this season, so make sure to tune in. We are on YouTube and all pod listening platforms at Love Deep Lab Podcast. I'm so excited to have you here. Also, I wanted to thank all of you who in season one subscribed, liked, or shared it. Um, it is just really powerful way. It's the algorithm of getting this information out there, getting more people to follow along and to have these skills. And it is my deepest passion and honor to share this information with people. Everything I've learned along the way, my own mistakes and my own failed relationships and my own divorce, um, currently in partnership, and also the things I've learned in my training and in my studies and my certifications and in my skills. So I really appreciate anyone sharing it. If you haven't done so, we'd love to have you subscribe or like or share it. Um, it really does help us to grow and get the information out there. So thanks so much. So now that we're done with the housekeeping things, let's get into today. So we had a video that went um, pretty viral on social media, and and, and it was talking about um, sexless marriages, and, and it was really tender for me uh, to hear all the comments. About a half of the comments were men and half the comments were women. Um, and the men were really surprised that women can be struggling with sex and sexuality in long-term partnerships or marriages as well. And then about half of the comments from the women were like, I thought I was all alone. I didn't know anyone else felt this way. And then the other half were really um, just really surprised that or said, you know, it's kind of blaming that it was the women that who are the responsible ones for um, sexless or low sex marriages. So it really got us ex- excited and interested. In, like, let's share this information. Let's get this information out there again, shedding light and love. Let's goddamn talk about it because we all want to have sex or hope to be having sex or, you know, want to have fabulous sex and aren't. I mean, there's so many things, but sex, everyone wants it and no one wants to talk about it. So we're going to talk about it. So today, that's what led to the topic for us today, which is nine tips for (laughs) nine tips to increase intimacy in your partnership. Okay. And if you're single and you're listening out there, these will still apply to you because I always say with my clients, I want you to learn to have fabulous sex with yourself and to bring so much pleasure to yourself sensually and sexually. So you can apply these tips if you're single and then also kind of use them to like vet through the murky waters of dating as you're considering potential partners or potential love partners. So so first of all, let's talk about what a sexless marriage is. So just in personal sharing, my marriage was not sexless. It was what we consider a low sex marriage. Um, but sexuality was always a struggle for us. And it takes two to tango. It takes two to not tango. So there's no blame. Um, I don't regret anything about my marriage for many reasons. One is it gave me my amazing son, who's the most 
powerful teacher in my life and who I just have the honor of being his mama. Um, two is my ex-husband is a really good man and a fabulous father. So I'm really blessed on that. And three is it's a part of my journey and my story. It is also part of what set me on this path to study sacred sexuality and sexuality and intimacy and to, to coach in it, to help others, men, women, and couples to have a deeper connection to themselves and their partnership and their intimacy. So all of that is part of my journey and I don't regret a single minute of it. So, but we struggled with, we had a hard marriage. You know, we, we, we co-parent almost seamlessly, but our marriage was challenging. And one of the areas we really struggled in was sex and sexuality. And we saw sex therapists and Western trained sex therapists and different various therapists. And, you know, we didn't have the communication skills that I have now and that he has now to navigate. And we had so many incompatibilities, but sex and sexuality was one of them, the whole, our whole marriage. Um, and that was really painful for us both in different ways. So, but 10 to 20% of marriages, according uh, to the research, are sexless. And sexless, by definition, means um, sex less than once a year, one time or less a year. Um, low sex marriage would be less than 12, 10 to 12 times per year. Um, and, you know, those are just definitions. The, the better question is, how does it feel for you, each of you in the partnership? Is it a source of tension? Is it a source of pain? Is it a source um, of shutting down? Um, do you have the skills to communicate about it? And really checking in because sex drive is a really interesting thing, right? It's not a static set point. It waxes and wanes. So many things impact our sex drive. Um, and we'll do another podcast, but really looking at different sex drives of men and women, how the research on that is changing and getting more current. But it really matters how does it feel for you in the partnership and how does it feel your, for your partner in the partnership. So that's what I would say. Um, and those are the kind of the definitions. But a more important stat for me is that 80 to 85% of couples in partnership, long-term partnership, marriage or long-term partnership, report sexual dissatisfaction. That's 85% reported. So I'm going to go out of limb and say like it's like 95 plus percent. And you know, the major reasons for divorce are sex, money, um, death or serious illness of a child. These are some of the major reasons for divorce. So let's, again, let's start talking about it. So today, I'm going to give you those nine tips to help boost and increase intimacy if you're struggling with sex and sexuality in your partnership. So the first tip is broaden your definition of intimacy. As you're navigating this with your partner, stop thinking of intimacy as just sexual intimacy. There is physical, there's sensual, there's emotional, there's spiritual, all these different kinds of intimacy. So as you broaden your definition of intimacy, you will be able to feel more connected and more intimate, more vulnerable with your partner, which in turn allows there to be greater desire um, and passion for each other. So that is um, the first thing is to broaden your definition of intimacy. The second one is communication. I'm going to say it. Communication, communication, communication. And more communication. So it is not easy. Um, my son jokes with me that sex is my favorite subject to talk about, but it's not everyone's. And I totally get that. But bring, so not in a time when you're feeling rejected or shut down or your partner's feeling rejected or shut down. In a time where you're feeling connected, start talking to your partner about it. Start with sharing um, a strength of your partners and then sharing how it feels for you, how the sex or lack of sex feels for you, impacts you, and what it is that you desire to create. So that's the second tip. The third tip is find out your love language. Gary Chapman um, in the mid-90s, early 90s, wrote the five love languages. It's still an amazing tool. You can Google it, take a free test. There's a podcast episode last season on love languages. Um, and there's also a, a PDF that we did in our personal development series on types of intimacy that can support you in, um, in that first tip of broadening the definition of intimacy. But find out your love language. Ask your partner to find out their love language and start having conversations about how you show and experience love. The fourth tip is the erotic blueprints. It's sort of like the love languages for the bedroom. There is also a podcast episode in season one, plus a few shorts on the um, erotic blueprint, but it was created by Jaya, who is a tantra teacher coming out of Los Angeles, J-A-I-Y-A. -A, and you can Google erotic blueprints and find out, take the quiz, have your partner take the quiz, find out what your erotic love language is, because how you show and feel and experience turn on might be different than your partner. And you might have your wires crossed a little bit there. And our erotic blueprint can change over life. So you may have had a different erotic language and now you have a different one. And so learning to navigate that. These are tools of communication, but they also really help to boost passion and desire in the partnership. The fifth tip is be willing to just roll around. Take sex off the table if sex is a painful subject. So maybe for a, a month or whatever it is for you, you say, we're not going to have sex, but we want to fool around 
one to two times per week, for example, whatever works for you. And fool around, fool around, make out, you know, touch each other, kiss each other, lick each other, but no sex. It takes the pressure off of sex. And then interestingly, fabulously, that can open the door for the desire to to rebuild for sex. The sixth tip is rule out medical issues. So many things can impact sex drive. Testosterone, estrogen, hormones, um, thyroid, medications, stress, lack of sleep, um, you know, some different medical conditions. So rule those out. Go to see your doctor and on your next annual, tell them that you're struggling a little bit with your sex drive or you're struggling with sex in your partnership. Again, practice and communicating about that and get those boxes checked. If they don't contribute, I think there can be hesitancy because then it's like, well, if there's not a medical reason, what, what's broken in me? So nothing is broken in you. There are so many things that you can do to reignite passion in your partnership. And I am so passionate about helping you to do that. The seventh tip is to increase self-love. And that might sound cliche, but we have to start with ourselves as the beloved. We have to be willing to offer ourselves, to make fabulous love to ourselves, to learn our own bodies. What's our own pleasure map? How do we best experience pleasure? And then we get to invite our partner in when we're having partnered experiences. So increase your self-pleasure, increase your self-love. That will help also to get you going, get the juices flowing, get that erratic energy flowing. Okay, so increase self-love, increase self-pleasure to open the door to feeling more connected to partnered sex. The eighth tip is about adoration. So adoration, devotion. So starting with yourself again, this is more from the sacred sexuality world, but when was the last time you adored your partner or shared an adoration with your partner or an appreciation? And if we don't feel that we adore our partner, because let's be honest, in long-term partnership, we don't even always like our partner, (laughs) right? And that's okay. Let's normalize that too. But something you adore about them, and maybe you haven't seen that in a while, but share with them. You know, you know what I really adore about you is blah, blah, blah. Um, it goes a long way. We don't do nearly enough of adoration and devotion in our partnership. And adoration and devotion opens our heart to deeper intimacy, opens our heart to more powerful connected sex. So that's my invitation to you to think of something you adore your partner and share it with them. In a time when you're in a connected space, it doesn't have to be a sexual or physical space. And the ninth tip is commit together in your partnership to work on it. Whatever that means for you, get a coach, find a therapist, take a workshop, read some books, take an online course. There are so many things out there that you can do. And I honor you for prioritizing your intimacy and your sex with your partner. It is an amazing part um, of a partnership. Uh, if you are in a monogamous partnership, one of the beautiful things about it is that this is the only person you share yourself with in that way. And that is sacred and magical and special. And let us not forget that. So find a coach, find a therapist, take a workshop. Uh, I would be honored to, you can check out the work we do. I work with men, women, co- and, um, with men, women, and couples in the coaching. Um, you can learn about all of our programs at lovedeeperlab.com under the programs tab. We do small groups. If small groups is more your jam than one-on-one coaching, we have a personal development series. Um, we have a workshop coming up. But if it's not me, great. Find someone that can help support you. Commit and prioritize to your sexuality, to your intimacy with your partner. And I totally honor you for that. And I just want to tell you and share with you that it is absolutely possible to have amazing sex, desire, and passion, even in long-term partnerships. Not only possible, the sex can get better and better, but we have to prioritize it. And so these are some tips for you to try this week, uh, this month with your partner and, and start prioritizing that, start reigniting that passion in your partnership. So thank you so much for tuning in, listening today. Thank you for being brave and opening your hearts to love deep.